Well, he uh, came out and now the cash is rolling in. He is the first openly gay male athlete to win a multi-year endorsement after coming out of the closet. With us now is former NBA player John Amici, author of Man in the Middle. Good to have you. Thank you very much. All right, yeah, I, I think you are the first openly gay athlete who secured a, a, a corporate sponsorship, are it's, you not? It's very true. It's very true. Bef prior to this, it's been a barren desert in terms of endorsements. Uh, and certainly one of the major worries for people, I think, coming out is that they would not gain endorsements but lose endorsements. They took a risk going to you. Uh, but I'm wondering whether they did that specifically because you were gay. Um, I'm not sure. I think that uh, that's part of the equation. I mean, the fact is that I do, uh, because of my demographics, I cover a lot of boxes. Uh, you know, yes, I'm bald, so uh, something that shaves your head is pretty logical. So head blader, it was a perfect fit for you? It was a perfect fit, and it's a product I've used before. So, that so no you said it transcended whether you were gay or not? It, I think it does, but at the same time, you know, gay, black, British, I cover a lot of different, you know, sporty, cover a lot of different markets for them, I think. So it, it is a good match. Since you came out of the proverbial closet, so to speak, there's been this little outcry. And I'm sure you heard what uh, former NBA player Tim Hardaway had said. First of all, I wouldn't want him on my team. Second of all, if he was on my team, I would really distance myself from him because I don't think that's right. And I don't think he should be in the locker room when we're in the locker room. It's disturbing words to hear. I think it's even more disturbing when he goes on and he talks about gay people shouldn't be in America or in the world. I think that's a, a, you know extremely dangerous rhetoric to be flying around. But it's, it's not representative of the NBA. Um, it, it's not representative of black people or of American well, society. But when you played, you kept it a secret. Right? I did. And it, because Why? there are people like that. And the, the truth is that he's a thousand times the player I could ever have hoped to be. Um, and if I'd have been on a team with a player like him of his status and he'd have expressed those views, my life would certainly not have been easier. But now, if you were uh, uh, heterosexual, would you have gotten the endorsement deal that maybe the edge of being gay gave you? Perhaps not in this case. Yeah. Perhaps not. Yeah. I think that, I mean, it's certainly a factor in this, but I... So you, when you were playing, you decided to keep it secret for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. um, what's been the, the fallout from your, your, either your fans or former players? Uh, the fallout from former players is almost nothing. I haven't heard from any active player that I played with. Um, mm -hmm. I've heard from a few who've retired and moved on, but nobody who's actually still playing has got in touch. Um, Ann Coulter made some choice comments about uh, Senator Edwards. What do you think of those? I think in many w respects Ann Coulter is far more insidious than um, people who speak uh, with the kind of raw rhetoric of Tim Hardaway. When she's a, an intelligent woman, she understands that although her words often smell like rotting fruit when they come from her mouth, um, she knows that she's doing damage. She, I don't I understand why any person would want to be the kind of person who would, with their words, she intentionally wound people. She said the faggot comments were not meant to disparage gays and worse. It's of not. Uh, it's not really her place to decide whether they do disparage or not. I know. I got 200 or so emails in the days after, directly after she said it from children and servicemen in Iraq who said, yes, those words do wound me. All right. So if we're going to have Ann Coulter on the show tomorrow, if you had the opportunity to sit across from her, what would you tell her? People with booming voices that project across the world have a responsibility to speak with eloquence and with empathy and compassion. And if you're incapable of that, you have a responsibility to shut up. Do you have a responsibility as well to not push a point or to push a point? Uh, my responsibility at this point is to stand up for the people who don't have voices. All right. Very good seeing you. I'll ask Ann about this tomorrow. Please do. Right. Very good seeing you.